Hi, I'm Josh, and today we're going to be having a look at some post-production in um, Lightroom Classic of one of my Palace Cat photographs. And this is a photograph, uh, as you can see here, there's a series of photographs of the Palace Cat that I made in um, winter in Mongolia of 2019 before the COVID crisis hit. And I'm still going through the images I shot, actually. And what I want to do today is I'm going to take you through post-production of this photograph here are the palace cat coming towards me in the snow and we're going to see um, how I took it from the raw file right through to the finished file um, we're processing it here as I said in Lightroom um, Classic um, using my desktop Mac Pro that's the new one and uh, I'm using in 2OS 5 um, uh, tablet and pen which I, I really like to do my post-production work on now I've actually already processed the, um, this raw file so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a virtual copy so I'm going to right click on it, create virtual copy. And then I'm going to reset the virtual copy and we're going to process it from scratch. So you can see absolutely everything I did. Now, as you can see, there are a lot of photographs here of this particular cat. And typically what I'm doing when I'm working in the field is I'm looking for the right gesture, the right light, the right moment with the wildlife, but I'm shooting all the time. And then I will sort it out later when I'm going through and editing my work, uh, which is what we're doing now. So I go through and I find the image that I, I like that works the best for me. And this particular photograph was, uh, let's just take it over to the develop module actually and we'll reset it while I'm talking. So D for the develop module and then we'll just reset it back to the standard. Um, so this is an image I was obviously lying down uh, in the snow and um, I had laid down in the snow quite some distance away from this cat and uh, the cat was hunting and or in hunting mode and did not know actually that I was there uh, I photographed this with a 600 millimeter lens uh, with the Canon EOS 1DX Mark II and not long after I took this photograph just a second or two the cat actually spotted me and stopped dead in its tracks backed up and then and moved off but I was able to get a few great shots of it coming towards the camera so we, we've reset the image now and we're going to go through post-production of it but just actually before we do that we'll go back to the grid view again and we'll just have a look at comparing the original and the finished file. So the original is the, uh, on the left here is the unprocessed raw file. And then on the right, we've got the finished TIFF. So as you can see, I didn't do a huge amount to this image. Um, and that's typical for me. I like to try and get it right in camera. Uh, and then if it's a great photograph, it just doesn't need much post-production. It's already a great photograph. And I'm really interested in, in creating my images in the camera and not having to spend hours in front of the computer in the studio doing post-production and, and manipulating and compositing. I don't want to do any of that. Uh, I really strongly believe that, you know, nature photography should be about being out in the field and making great images in nature. So let's just go back to, uh, back to uh, the develop module with our, our virtual copy, which has been reset. And uh, D for develop is a shortcut key. I'm really big on shortcut keys. We'll just close up the left window here so we've got a bit more real estate. So now as you, a few things about this image, I guess, that we should, we should comment on before we start to produce, do post-production on it. First is if we look at the histogram, we can see that it's definitely biased towards the right. Uh, so the image has been very, is correctly exposed. There's no blown highlights. I can check that by just turning on the clipping indicators, uh, which is the J key. Uh, and then you can also just click on these little boxes up here in the right hand side for the blacks and the whites uh, To see if there's any clipping, but there is no clipping which is fantastic So it's been a good it's been really well exposed. It's been shot in manual, which is how I like to do all of my work I, I prefer to shoot in manual and have full control of the camera uh, So let's just talk about uh, Exposure now as shot this is optimum for the best possible quality But it's a little bright for act the actual production of the image uh, in terms of how I want it to look so I'm just going to back off the exposure just a little bit, uh, just that much, until I get those highlights back under control that were in the fur, particularly in this area here. They really need to come down just a fraction. And we're going to tweak these some more. So we've just dropped it about a third of a stop uh, from the overall exposure. We haven't yet touched white balance. We'll come back to that. Uh, I like to go now and set my black point. And if I hold down the option on a Mac or the Alt key on a PC, and drag down my black side, I can see, see when clipping starts to occur. So I'm going to set this just when I've got some solid black clipping where I want it to be, minus 25 on the black point slider. And then I'm going to do the same for whites, except I don't want any clipping. So I'm going to set it just below the point of clipping. 
there. And now I've set my white point and my black point for this photograph. That's how I will set my white point and black point for almost every image that I do. It's very rare that I will uh, deviate from that. Now we'll just tweak the highlights and shadows. So if we look at this photograph, we can see that the light is coming across the cat uh, and falling across the cat. So we've got one half of the cat's face inside in, in, that's lit and one half that's in shadow. So I'm going to just balance that out a little bit by, by bringing up the shadows. And that's just going to help to bring up and soften that contrast in the cat. And I'm going to bring down the highlights as well. I'll actually bring the highlights all the way down to minus 100. Never be afraid to bring the highlights all the way down. Um, highlight detail is extremely important. And even if you bring it all the way down and you flatten out the whites, there's a few techniques I can show you in perhaps in a different video on how to get texture and tone into your whites as well. So that's basically it for um, uh, the tone tab in Lightroom. That's, that's all the adjustments we need to do. The next thing I'm going to do is set the white balance. And as you can see, this is as shot at the moment. And it's not bad. It's very close to optimal. But I'm going to just tweak it a little bit. So I'm going to use the custom tool, which is the shortcut key for that is W. And I'm going to just click up here. Uh, in this um, bluish gray area because I, my, in my memory, this was much more neutral and not quite so cool. So I'm going to just click that and that's just warmed up the image quite a bit. And that's now more like it was or my memory, uh, uh, more like my memory of what it was like when I took this image. So I can also just drop that, that just a fraction and just season that to taste. So with white balance in nature photography, I think it's very much a case of season to taste. What you need to be critically careful of is your tint. Uh, the tint slider is the one that a lot of people don't understand. You can very easily end up with a cyan or magenta color cast uh, in your images if you're not careful. And neutralizing uh, or setting a white point the way I just did then is actually a very good way to get the correct tint as well. So now we've set white balance, we will actually crop the image. And the shortcut key for, for cropping, uh, if we don't want to go over here to our toolbar, is the R key. And I like to crop in lights out mode. Uh, but just before I do that, you can see I've got, at the moment, I've got the um, the crop, cropping indicators in thirds. But there's a new one, Adobe, included, um, which I think might be optimum for this image. So if we go up, I think from memory, it's in the tools area. Uh, and if we go down to tool overlay, sorry, crop guide overlay, you'll see there's a new one there called center. Now that didn't exist a version of Lightroom ago. And this is something that I requested of um, one of the engineers in Lightroom who has been with me um, on a trip to Greenland. And he very kindly went back and, and uh, included this in the next edition of Lightroom. So we're going to use the center crop. And I'm going to crop this. I crop fairly arbitrarily to the image. So uh, what I'm looking here is, rem is about removing distracting elements from the photograph while maintaining enough of the background and enough of the surroundings to leave context. So that's pretty close to what I, I'm thinking here. Uh, and you can see I've got the cat almost dead center, which is fine. It's okay to break the rules every now and again if, if it works for the particular image. And I think it does in this case. So we'll, we'll, we'll go with that as the crop uh, to exit and we'll just exit lights out mode as well. Lights out mode is just the uh, L key. So if you push it once, it'll dim to 50% and then push it again, it'll dim to 100%. So once we've done that, I'm going to look at um, the presence tab. And what I've found works extraordinarily well. Now you can see this image is, is pin sharp as captured. It's had no sharpening applied other than, than um, or none at all actually yet uh, here in Lightroom. So what can help a lot, particularly with animal fur, if you're working with wildlife, is texture. Um, so what I like to do is I'm going to use a local adjustment. I'm going to push the K key for a local adjustment and I'm going to paint just to, the, over the fur of the cat. And if I use the O key, it'll actually turn off and you can visually see the area that you're painting. So I just want to paint in this sort of area on the cat, just roughly. And then I'm going to apply just about 10 points of texture. And that just really makes everything a little crisper. Uh, and it really helps, I find, with animal fur. It's a nice little technique. The other one I like to do for animals uh, is work on the eyes a little bit. So again, a local adjustment. 
uh, the K key to is the shortcut key and I'm just going to paint in the eyes and in order to help draw the viewer into the eyes I'm just going to increase the exposure in that area by a third of a stop and that's just going to brighten up the eyes a bit and I'm going to add a little bit of saturation in there as well and that's really going to help draw the viewer into the eyes of the animal because with wildlife photography if the eyes are sharp and bright it will draw the viewer straight into the image and create an instant connection so that's a nice little tip too if you're working in wildlife and I'm not going to apply any clarity to this image because I don't want to enhance or sharpen up the background uh, or do anything to that at all I want it to remain nice and soft with the grasses and the snow so we're going to do nothing in the presence tab whatsoever but we are going to come down to the HSL tab and just use the targeted adjustment tool which if you, you can see here is just this little button if you push this and then put it over the part of the photograph it will highlight the color that, that is actually there in the image so here we can see it's orange and there's probably some red in there too I imagine so I'm just going to drag that up I just want to increase the saturation a bit in the cat's nose and also just in the whiskers here just like that and that again it's just going to add a little bit more warmth and color into the face of the cat um, yeah we'll just go just a fraction more I think let's have a look something something around about there is great okay we'll turn that off now we can sharpen the image so when we are sharpening the photograph we need to be zoomed in uh, one to one uh, you cannot sharpen properly if you're not zoomed in at one to one uh, so that's very important make sure you're set at one to one I like to set the radius first and this image has quite a lot of fine textural detail in the fur of the cat so I'm going to want to set a low radius so I'm going to hold down the option key and just drop my radius down to about 0.7 and then I will hold down the option key or uh, alt if you're on a PC and just ramp up the sharpening just to crisp up the image to about there so it's very important not to overdo it but you just want to increase that apparent sharpness that um, was there in the original capture then we can zoom back out and apply a little masking uh, masking is important because we don't want to apply sharpening to these soft grasses in the background and at the moment sharpening is being applied globally so we really want to keep it focused on uh, on the cat now we could just uh, paint that in with a local adjustment but I find it's it's actually more effective to do it this way um, so I'm going to hold down the option key again and as I bring this up you're going to see it's just going to start masking off those reeds area that reed and sky about there's what we want okay next thing I'm going to do is just clean up a few dust spots um, the shortcut key for that is Q uh, some of this is dust some of these are snow spots um, but I think it's good just to clean up sort of these really offensive ones. Um, the rest of it's pr pretty much okay. Uh, one of the last things I'm going to do, I'm just going to hit uh, remove chromatic aberration. Now there really isn't any CA in this image at all. It's shot with a $20,000 lens, uh, almost a $20,000 lens. This Canon 600mm f4 Mark III. Uh, but there's really nothing to be lost by clicking on on this button so I do it as a matter of course um, because occasionally maybe there'll be some CA because it was shot back lit into the Sun or something like that so again doesn't hurt to uh, to tick that so the last thing I'm going to do and again this is just to help draw the eye into the into the um, into the cat is I'm going to use a mask to just soften off even more of these reeds in the background now this was actually shot at f4.5 so almost wide open um, and you can see the camera has absolutely nailed focus uh, in the face of the cat so it's done its job completely well what I need to do though is to actually uh, just soften off those grasses even more and we can do that with the radial tool so if I draw that out uh, and place it on the cat and again using the O key I can see the area it's going to affect and I can shape it to the image and actually even use a brush and erase it where I don't want it so I'm just going to make sure we've got nothing affected in the cat because I'm actually going to be using negative clarity to soften off the background even a little bit more so I don't want to have any of the cat affected now this is a technique I don't use very often 
um, and it's really just enhancing what's in the image but you need to be careful here too much negative clarity will make an, a very unrealistic looking bokeh or out of focus area so I'm going to now um, put some negative clarity in here and I'll probably overdo it to start with and then just ramp it back so as you can see it becomes a bit dreamy there it's not quite realistic looking I just want to keep it, the effect subtle there we go so about, about there is perfect okay so that's basically everything I did to this image so if we now go back and have a look at this compared to the finished image we'll see that they're actually very very similar now when I rendered out the TIFF uh, I took it over to uh, to the one of the Nick plugins um, and just tried a couple of things there but in the end I decided I just preferred it with uh, just what I've done here in, in the uh, in the Adobe Lightroom so if we go back here and we just compare um, there's the virtual copy we just worked on here's the raw file that we worked I worked on previously in Lightroom and if we do a compare you can see they're very very similar very similar indeed there's maybe I've added a little more color into the one we've just done but that's very much a season to taste uh, preference and, and you could go up or down with that depending on the sort of look you wanted to have with an image like this uh, I think both work quite well uh, I think I probably prefer the one I've just done now. I think that little bit of extra warmth and color in the cat just helps bring it to life a bit more. Uh, but there you go. So that's post-production of the Palace Cat uh, from Mongolia. Beautiful cat. Uh, a very rare cat. A cat I hope I get to go back and photograph again at some point in time. I very much enjoyed working with this animal. It was extremely tough to find. Uh, and perhaps I'll go into that a little bit more um, uh, in another video with another image of a palace cat and we can talk a little bit more about that at that point in time so there you go i hope you enjoyed it post-production of the palace cat